Okay, I'm gonna do a uh, recap of um, of my trades today. Um, so let's see. I um, came out okay, um, five thirteen, but my commission was like two hundred dollars in commission. And again, ignore the open positions I have here. These are the swing trades that um, that I'm doing. So swing trades, they take um, place over uh, you know the number of days or weeks or whatnot. So the, that's why I have these open positions. I'm about to close this one actually uh, once it hits my target of seventy one dollars and thirty cents. So we'll see if it hit it today or maybe uh, Monday. Um, so let's talk about the day trades I did today. I uh, started with an opening range breakdown of Jivo. I actually took really small shares because I was playing some other stocks. Um, so only 300 shares dropped um, 491. It's a pretty big drop from 519 to 490 or 491. So I covered it all. Um, and then later on when I saw I could not make a new five minute low. Um, and then when I made a new five minute high, I uh, went in, bought some because it was above this moving average um, and then so when I saw it, I couldn't break this moving average I just got out of my position which was good because the stock was extremely weak and then so it kept on uh, dropping um, and I think that's where I stopped I didn't play Jivo again um, oh actually no I did play Jivo again so I bought it uh, sold off and then when it could not make a new five minute low um, I saw that uh, and then I kind of waited a bit because I caught it kind of late but then when I saw that it got above this level and then it sort of formed this consolidation pattern, um, I thought this was gonna hold it pretty well. And then also because this is very distended, so from at this level, 389 to 420, it's very distended from the moving average on a five minute chart as well. So when it made a new five minute high, which corresponded to this with the support level here, I went in um, uh, kind of heavy, I think 3000 shares or something like that. Uh, bought it and then I sold towards this level. Um, so that's what I did for Jivo. Uh, made uh, about like 200 bucks on it. Um, so that was Jivo. Uh, let's see here. KBH. I didn't really do much with KBH. I kind of just lost some money. Uh, let's see. It was very choppy. So uh, I think this is an opening range breakdown. Well, so I was chopping around. So it broke down a bit. Uh, 9.30, nope, it was just chopping around. So this was the chop, 9.30. Then if I was paying attention to it, I would have um, shorted here and probably covered here. But instead I went in here for a short, it dropped, I did not cover. Then when it bounced back up, um, I just exited before the pop. So I was very um, fortunate, I kept to my stop loss. Uh, and, and the reason for that is because I set my stop loss at this moving average. It's a very strong moving average. So when I saw I was about to drop below the moving average, I went short. Um, and when I was about to pop, then that means, you know, there's, uh, for lack of a better term, gravi gravitational forces pulling this stock back up. So that means this is a good support level. And what that means is if it supports well, it would bounce. And this is exactly what it did, it bounced. So I just exited it here, took a small loss, and, and otherwise it could have been a very bad day. Um, then let's look at two pieces of shit stocks. Let's look at Derm. I lost a, a ton of money on Derm, like 500, almost $600. So Derm, it actually went the direction I wanted it to go, uh, but um, the timing was way off on, on Derm. I wasn't able to time it well, so I lost money, a lot of money. Uh, let's see, 9.30. So Derm, I did the opening range breakdown, which is actually good. So I also over traded on Durham, by the way, because of that. So opening range breakdown 935, short covered, saw so it was weak, short covered, short covered, and then it, it sort of uh, bounced on me. So I exited with a with a loss. Uh, and then it kept dropping. So I short, I covered, so I um, made some money there, but I probably lost a lot of money there. Uh, and then this is just over trading and I have no idea what I was doing there. Uh, then I went short and I covered, um, 
But as you can see, every time I short, I didn't make any money. So when I went short, it bounced and I had to cover. Went short, it bounced and I had to cover. Short, bounced, I covered. But then eventually, overall, the directionality of it went in the direction I want, that I thought it was going to go, which was on the short side. Um, it never broke this uh, 90 EMA, but the problem is this is over trading and every time I lost a few hundred bucks, a few hundred bucks, added up to be a $600 loss. So here I should, I really should have taken a smaller position and just held it through uh, with the stop loss above here. Um, I don't know, like here I took a small profit, but then there's a big bounce. So I, I traded Derm really badly, but that 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 was Derm. Uh, and then Gamp, what did I do here on Gamp? So Gamp, it's kind of a break even. I lost money and then I made some money back. Uh, Gamp was on my watch list. Um, ah, it's okay. So it was on my watch list. I was trying to make my daily goal for the day. Um, so I lost a lot of money here because, so Gamp couldn't make a new five minute low. Um, and it was very descending. If you look at this, uh, from the open, it just kept on dropping. Couldn't make a new five minute low. So I thought it was going to bounce back up towards VWAP. So I took a pretty sizable position. Uh, I looked at it here too. There was a good support level here at the uh, 9 EMA. So I went long target of the uh, of the SMA up here, and then it dropped. So I cut. So I basically sold out of the position. Um, and then when I saw that it was weak, um, couldn't break this moving average. Um, so I went short, and then I covered some, uh, which is where I got um, some of the money back. Um, and then I went short again. Um, and then I, and I covered. And then I think I made a hot key mistake here. I accidentally bought at this level instead of selling. So I actually sold, I uh, bought another 500 more. And then so I, I sold out there with a small $5 profit. Um, but essentially, yes, I made money off of this short to cover this, and I made, and then I lost money on the uh, on the long here. I made money on this short. I made money on this short. So, um, and I think this is one whole play. So I short, covered, covered, covered. It bounced up. I added to my position, um, and I held it through this because I saw that it was actually very. So it was a dangerous maneuver, but at the same time, I saw that it was very weak. Um, at, at the time so uh, I held it and I covered it but overall and actually I added to this position but I actually broke my own rule one of my rules that I have is I, I don't like to um, take more than 4,000 shares or more than 3,000 shares but I took 4,000 at this point um, again I didn't know how many shares I had so it was lack of awareness, but I got lucky. I came out with a uh, $10 loss. So that was that. Um, Baba is the trade that I'm actually um, very proud of. I made money off of Baba and it was respecting the averages, moving averages. And I, I think I did good discipline with uh, with Baba. So uh, initially I avoided it. I avoided this, um, this area where I was just bouncing about. But then when I saw the breakout, so this is, 9.30 so that didn't really do anything so this is just there's a, this is a 10 minute breakout right because the opening range is here from here and to here that's like the opening range it didn't really break down at all but then when i saw that it was about to break out um i looked at this level it's above vwap so my stop loss could be right here below vwap that was perfect um and same thing here right it's above the moving average it's above vwap it's about actually both of these um exponential moving averages and above the simple moving average so went long covered 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 um i should have held some but i was just worried that it would drop because the stock moves pretty quickly and, and fast my target was up here so i covered and then i saw that it was going to break this so this is a very good and also there's a moving average up here so this is a um previous day close very powerful uh, um uh price 
point. So uh, I saw I was about to break it. I knew I was going to break it. There was a moving average right above it. So I knew I was going to try to test that. So went long, I think a smaller position at this time. And then I just covered really quickly once it popped. So this is more of a scalp. Um, and then later on, when it started to show signs of weakness, it was dropping, could not make a new five minute high. Um, I waited for it to drop below this moving average because again, this the simple moving average is at the 50 and 200, which is what I have. Uh, very powerful moving averages. So I, it, it could act as a level of uh, support and I don't want it to bounce back on me and then to retest this, which sometimes it may do. So I waited for it to drop below that. Um, and then on the one minute, it corresponded to this moving average, the exponential. I think that's the, um, I think that's a nine. Uh, so, so either way, it went below that moving average. So I went short, um, could have set my stop loss maybe up here a bit above it. Uh, it started to drop. So I covered once it dropped past those two and then I covered on the way down to view app. Uh, and then I shorted once more when I saw that it lost the VWAP and it lost the simple moving average and the exponential moving average. Uh, same thing on the five minutes so that they tie in nicely. And that's a very powerful sign once the, if the one minute and five minute correspond to uh, one another. So when that happened, um, I, um, I just covered um, on the way down towards this, which was my price target. And then I shorted once more when I saw that it was below the this price target because there's another um, uh, previous day level down here. Uh, not necessarily the close, but it could be. Well, actually, it may be the close on the one minute. On the five minute, it's the high and low, I think. Yesterday, high and low. But either way, those are pretty powerful. Not as powerful as previous day close level like this, but those are pretty powerful level. And um, then there's also this... Um, pre-market uh, low as well. So I thought it was gonna go down that way. So I went short, I uh, covered along the way down. And then once it made past that, I shorted again and then covered. And then um, actually I covered it all when I saw I could not make another, um, uh, another low. Uh, and then here I went um, short again, I think, uh, cause I saw I was having a difficult time going up. So I short, but then I covered really quickly. Um, once I saw that it was, it's not going to go down. It was going to go back up. So I covered and I think I lost either lost some money or did make much money on, on that. And then I stopped playing it because it, it then started to get kind of weird on me because then it started to oscillate and whatnot. Uh, I think eventually it made its way back up, but then it just got kind of um, out of hand for me to play. So that was that is that. Um, so that's it for my uh, day trade um figures um and then up here like i said the gilead swing trade it actually closed um so i made 363 dollars off of that i think over the course of uh two days i think i bought yesterday or was it wednesday it's either yesterday or wednesday um so over two days so 363 so a bit more in a 150 a day on, on that. So um, I may make another video uh, talking about that. I'm not going to talk about it here because this is a uh, day trade, not a swing trade. But overall, then today is 876. But the 363 actually came from uh, a swing trade. So I'm not going to count it. Um, anyway, uh, thanks for uh, listening.